Hey, it's Marie Forleo, host of the Marie Forleo podcast and Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. And this is Q&A Tuesday. And today's question comes from April. Marie, oh my God, I love you. I love your work. I get so much out of your interviews. Um, thank you for doing what you do. So my question is age old, okay? It's applicable across the board. Why do I stop doing the things that make me feel good that I know I need to do? Um, so I'm talking morning practice, journaling, meditation, exercise, whatever, you know, you figure out for yourself and you get it going and you're like, oh, I've been doing this for two days. I'm feeling great. Damn, I'm good. Right. And then you're like into a week. And at that point, you're just like, this is my life now. And you tell people, oh, you know, I, I had to do my meditation. So, you know, I wasn't available. You know, you, you're, you're in a whole new world. So this time I rocked it for like a month dude i did my exercising i found this free exercise bike on the side of the road and i started doing 20 minutes of bike riding every morning now i can make up a million excuses i'm a mom i work full time blah blah but i was able to make the time one point why do i step away from it Oh my goodness, April. First of all, we love you. We love your energy. We love your spirit. And we love your questions so much. In fact, my team was like, yes, April, I want to hear the answer to this question too. So why do we stop doing the things that we all know are good for us, especially when we've been able to make the time before? It's a head scratcher. Am I right? Now, obviously, it makes no logical sense, right? But then again, we know that we human beings are not logical creatures. We are emotional and often irrational when it comes to our behavior. Now, the truth is there are a gajillion different reasons why many of us stop doing the things that we know are good for us. Some people just get bored, right? Some people rebel against any kind of structure or authority, even if it's themselves. And some people get off track, like if their schedule changes or they travel or somebody gets sick or something like that. Now, as a coach, I'm usually not a big fan of why questions. First, because in this format, I can't talk with you. I can't get to the root of your specific situation by asking you more questions. But more broadly, why questions can sometimes encourage a little bit of navel gazing, right? And they can easily spiral into beating yourself up, thinking that you suck, or that you're just not built to be consistent and disciplined, all of which is not true. So I think a better, smarter, and more helpful question is, how can I be more consistent in doing the things that I know make me feel good? Or how can I set myself up to win the vast majority of time? Now, those questions are questions that we can tackle. Plus, how questions really aim your brain towards the solution, right? Rather than the problem. That's our everything is figure outable philosophy in action. But before we talk about the how, I do want to make something very, very clear. April, my love, you are not bad and you are not weak for falling off the wagon of being consistent. Virtually everybody I know does stuff like this, including me. That's because we are human, right? We have this vision sometimes of these perfect meditators who meditate twice a day, every day, and never, ever miss. Or we hear about people like Jerry Seinfeld who write a big X on his calendar every day he writes a joke and that he never breaks his streak. But guess what? Even Jerry Seinfeld doesn't do this. On a Reddit Ask Me Anything, he actually said, this is hilarious to me that somehow I am getting credit for making an X on a calendar with the Seinfeld productivity program. It's the dumbest non-idea that was not mine, but somehow I'm getting the credit for it. Point here is you do not have to strive to be this perfect person who does something every single day for the rest of your life, unless that kind of thing really just floats your boat. Now that said, there are some systems that you can easily put in place to make it easier for yourself to be more consistent on a consistent basis and some behavioral science that can really give you an edge. Now, by the way, I just created an entire training program about this called Time Genius. It's filled with the exact processes and systems that I personally use to consistently show up for myself. It is packed with tricks and tools grounded in cutting edge behavioral science and neuroscience, and you can learn more at jointimegenius.com. But for right now, I want to share three simple steps that can help you keep doing the things that you know feel good for you. 
So step number one is choose one practice or habit, not 17, right? So I love that you mentioned all the kind of things that we like to do in our morning practices. So journaling, exercising, all kinds of things like that. And behavioral science tells us that if you want to be successful in terms of forming a new habit, it is best to focus on one habit, not five, not 10, and definitely not 27. So I'd encourage you to ask yourself out of everything that you could do that feels good, which one habit or one practice is going to give you the most bang for the buck given what you want to experience at this stage and season of your life? So is it riding your bike for those 20 minutes in the morning or is it something else? Take a look inside and then choose one. Once you do that, then you are ready for step two, which is turn it into a time-bound personal challenge. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Earlier this year, I wanted to strengthen my ability to create faster and just with more fluidity. So I gave myself this 30-day writing challenge where I committed to writing every single day for at least an hour on a non-work-related project. 30 days really felt like this fun and invigorating period of time for me. It wasn't too short where it was just too easy, and it wasn't too long where I felt tired before I even got started. I even wrote my best friend Chris into it, and we started sending each other these text messages every day when we got our daily writing done. So I would encourage you to do this for yourself. So you want to find a length of time that feels like a stretch. I mean, maybe that's two weeks, maybe it's two months, maybe it's 90 days, whatever feels right for you. But I want you to make it 100% doable and something that you feel happy and excited to commit to. Now, once you do that, you're ready for step number three, which is make your success inevitable. So this is where the real magic happens. I want you to ask yourself, what can I do now to make sure that I complete this challenge successfully? So for me, there were actually a few pieces. One is I needed to get Josh on board because I knew that I was planning to write over the weekends and that's usually our special time together. And two, I needed to create a system to track and monitor my progress because studies show that people who track and monitor what they do are way more likely to stay on track. So I want you to think about this for yourself, right? What are some small steps that you can take to complete your challenge? Is it talking with your family? Is it getting to bed earlier? Is it recruiting a buddy? I don't know. I'm sure you got ideas though. There's of course a lot more that I could teach you about the science of willpower and consistency. Too much to get into right now, but I promise you, If you follow these steps, you will be well on your way to being more consistent with doing the things that you know make you feel good. Now, April, there's one more thing specifically for you. So you shared that you're a teacher and we all know that is not an easy job. I mean, especially with everything happening around us right now. But the thing I respect most about you and what you shared in your question was when you said, now I could make up a million excuses. I'm a mom, I work full time, blah, blah, blah. But I was able to make the time at one point. Why do I step away from it? That right there, my friend, what you said, that is the sign of someone I have deep respect for. And you know why? It's because you know excuses are total BS. Again, we can all make excuses if we want to, but the kind of folks that I want to work with, the kind of people that I want to surround myself with are no excuses kind of people. And that is you. And because I believe in you so much, and I know there's just a few systems that you need to put in place. There's just a few things that you need to understand, and you are going to be more consistent than you've ever dreamed of. So that being said, I want to gift you a seat in my new program that's called Time Genius. I promise you, everything you need to be more consistent is in there. Plus, you're going to get all the tips and the tools and the tricks that I've personally been using for decades. So April, that was my A to your Q, and I really hope it helps. Now, for all you out there who can relate to April's struggle, I'm really curious. Which of today's steps are going to help you the most? Is it step number one, choosing that one habit to build rather than 36? Is it step number two, turning what you want to build into a fun and achievable time-bound challenge? Or maybe it's step number three, right? Maybe you need to figure out how to make your success inevitable. Let me know in the comments below.
Now, of course, if you want to go even deeper and if you want to master your ability, not just to be consistent, but to make better, wiser, and more joyful use of your time, you got to head on over to jointimegenius.com because it would be my honor to work with you too. Now, until next time, stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time on Marie TV. Hey, are you tired of feeling overwhelmed and overcommitted? Like no matter how hard or how long you work, you never seem to get enough done. The good news, you do not have to keep living that way. Time Genius is my brand new revolutionary training experience that'll help you set the right priorities, double your creative output, and skyrocket your energy, joy, and profits. Get ready to kiss overwhelm goodbye forever. To learn more, go to jointimegenius.com. That's jointimegenius.com. I'll see you there.